Today's episode is sponsored by Motion Ray, but more on that later. Today we're going to talk about my complete color grading process in Final Cut Pro. <music> YouTuber, I'm putting out content fast. Each week, I'm putting out two to three videos with a one man team on a minimal time frame. But even though I'm creating my videos fast, I still don't want to compromise on the quality, especially when it comes to color grading. So that's why I thought that in today's video, I would do a breakdown of my whole color grading process in Final Cut Pro in order to get that cinematic color grade fast and easy. Oh yeah, and if at some point you're watching this video and you feel like, wow, I really like the content that Tempo is creating, make sure that you like and comment below because it really does help with the algorithm of gods. And if you're not yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe. I'd love to have you a part of this community. I think we're all on the same page that we all want high quality color grades in our videos, but done fast. I know that personally I can't spend literally hours color grading a video because that would mean I'd probably put out like one video a month. And that's no fun for anybody. Ever since I made the jump from Premiere Pro to Final Cut Pro, I've been really fine tuning my color grading process so it's faster than ever before. And nowadays it takes me around 15 to 30 minutes per video depending on whether the video is ranging from five to 15 minutes in length. Well, you're probably wondering at this point, how in the world is that possible? Well, let's get under the hood and let me show you my color grading process. Now at this point, I'm gonna be assuming that most of you guys are filming with log picture profiles. If you aren't, you can just skip step one and continue from there. And it's not the end of the world if you feel too overwhelmed by log, but filming in log isn't actually as overwhelming as it may seem, and I'm gonna show you in a bit. But the reason why you wanna film in log is that you're gonna have more dynamic range in the highlights and shadows meaning that you have more flexibility while you're filming because if for some reason you mess up the exposure, there's still gonna be information in the highlights and the shadows. And as well, when you get into color grading, when you have a nice flat picture profile like log, you have way more room to move the colors into a certain direction that you'd like. So in my color grading process, I literally have three steps. Step number one is taking the log picture profile to a Rec 79, which just means in fancy terms to have contrast and saturation again, and it looks normal. Step number two, is doing the color correction or color matching, and step number three is color grading. I actually prefer though to do first the log to the natural rec when I look, then add the color grade look, and then I do the color matching for each clip. So here in my Final Cut Pro Studio, I have a studio shot of me, similar to what we're doing right now, and then I have these different B-roll clips that I filmed myself literally just right outside of my office, which is pretty epic. This is like some nice, moody cinematic lighting and this kind of like, you know, garage hall. It got a little bit eerie when you go down there. I have never gone down there, but overall, it's a pretty cool place to film. So when I get into Final Cut Pro, the first thing I do is I add an adjustment layer. Now, for some reason, Final Cut Pro doesn't have in the program to begin with, Final Cut Pro doesn't have adjustment layers. So you can actually go just on multiple resources and download plugins or presets with an adjustment layer. I'll make sure to link that in the description so you guys can just download them. So what I do is I throw on the adjustment layer on top of the footage and then I go to my effects and I choose custom LUT. And I'm gonna put twice the custom LUT onto the adjustment layer. Now we're gonna choose one of the nice little moments of me looking in to the sunlight, look at that, little catch lights in my eyes. And right now you can tell that the footage looks very flat. I'm filming in the S-Log3 S Cinetone on the A7S3. So what I'm gonna do to take it from log to the corrected you know, colors with contrast and saturation again, all I'm gonna do is go to the first custom LUT and I'm gonna go to the correction LUTs. And again, these are my brother's uh, Sony correction LUTs and LUTs. Uh, I really enjoy them, I think they look really great, so why not use them because you don't need to reinvent the wheel always. So I'm gonna go to S-Log3 s Cinetone Rec 709 because that's the one that I filmed with. You also have a dark version, which if the footage is a little bit more exposed, you can just use that one to get a little bit darker. But I'm gonna select that, and right away, voila! One click, one effect, back and forth from log, 
to correct it. That looks good. It already has a nice amount of contrast, saturation, and it looks good. Now, instead of using a correction let like the one from my brother's pack, yeah, you could add you know, an S curve, add the contrast yourself and saturation, but I find that in order to get the same consistency for all your shots and to save time, it's a lot easier just to use correction LUTs. There are also a bunch of free ones. Most camera companies on their websites will offer some sort of log to Rec 709 correction LUT. Some of them are good, some are not so good, so it's a little bit of a hit and miss with them. And just as a clarification, I am in no way making money from advertising my brother's correction LUTs. I just want to support somebody when they're making great products for us to use, and this is literally what I use in my color correction grading process every single day. And again, this might seem really repetitive. You're thinking probably like, why do I film in log and then just bring it back to normal? Why wouldn't I just film with a normal picture profile to get that contrast and saturation in the beginning? Now, the reason again is because you're gonna have more dynamic range in the footage, meaning you'll save the highlights and the shadows for the color grade. Plus, if you messed up filming the thick exposure, you're gonna have a little bit more grace with that. And you're also gonna be able to take the color grading to a certain direction with more flexibility. So that's why we film with log picture profiles. I know it seems a little bit repetitive, like kind of back and forth, but trust me, it helps to get that nice cinematic look for your footage. Now, step number two is adding your own color grade with using a LUT or a look you wanna create in the program. I use my own personal LUTs. I love the Cine Perfect Skin Tones LUT. Now, when it comes to LUTs and grading your footage, there's no really like one rule, there's just preference and styles. You know, some people really like the dark, cold, moody look. Some people like, for example, me, I like a nice warm, desaturated greens look. And these are achieved through different LUTs. Of course, there are some big no-nos. You don't want to have like green skin tones so it makes it look like you're about to puke or really red or super orangey that you look like a Noompa Loompa. I often say it, and I'm gonna keep saying that, that you don't want those two extremes, and maybe there has been certain you know, color grading cliches over the years, so those are maybe the no-nos in this kind of step. So like I said, I personally like the very warm, desaturated look. You know, I don't wanna have bright, saturated greens. I don't like to have a lot of blue saturated. I like that desaturated, warm, you know, nice skin tone looking footage. Now, if that's not your style, I actually have created a Cine LUT pack with a bunch of different styles. I'm gonna list them off. I got the Cine Kick Ass, Cine Perfect Skin Tones, Cine Teal and Orange, Cine California, Cine Vintage, Cine Live to Shadows, and Cine Blue. So there's a little bit of a style and preference for everyone in the pack and I will make sure to link my own pack as well down below. Sorry for the shameless plug, but hey, if you create a product that you use yourself, you enjoy it, and if you wanna enjoy it, it's a win-win situation, and I appreciate you guys supporting my channel through buying my digital products. If you find it risky for some reason to buy one LUP pack from one creator, there is another option. Like I said earlier, this episode's sponsor is Motion Array. If you're still looking for your own style or look and you don't always wanna buy one single pack and then find out that it's not for you, through Motion Array, there is a huge library of LUTs and different looks, so you can just download freely through their library and test them out and try to figure out what is the look that you like for your footage. There's all sorts of awesome blockbuster grades, vintage grades, specific color grading LUTs for different cameras, like DJI's cameras, Sony cameras, Nikon, Canon, you name it, it's all there, so you can just go through that library and get the LUT that you want for your footage. And with the monthly subscription, not only do you get LUTs, but you can pretty much get any kind of asset you're looking for. A Motion Array's website, you got templates, presets, motion graphics, plugins, music, sound effects, stock videos, and stock photos. It's insane the amount of tools that you can find on Motion Array's website to spice up your projects. Motion Array's monthly subscription allows you to download unlimited assets from their website and their monthly subscription is really affordable. You can get the monthly subscription for $20.99 or if you wanna, you know, save some bucks, get the yearly subscription, 20 bucks a month only. Which is insane to think that you only have to pay $20 for all these crazy LUTs from different creators and as well all the other assets available on Motion Array's website. So click the link for Motion Array below, go and explore the website, I know you're gonna love their assets. Thanks again Motion Array for sponsoring this episode, now let's go back to my color grading process. So I've done step one, I've corrected it from log to the Rec 709, 
Step number two, I'm gonna add my color grading LUT. So I'm gonna go here and add the Cine Perfect Skin Tones. Now, at first it's like, whoa, that's that does not look good. That's very warm and a little bit too green. And the reason is, it's because it's at full blast. So here in Final Cut Pro, you have the mix, and that basically means when you have it at one, that's 100%. So I tend to bring it down to maybe 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Let's do 0 0.6 here. Now, still, it's it's looking a little bit, you know, too warm and maybe a little bit too green tinted. And that totally depends on the, you know, environment you're shooting on, what your white balance was, and that's where the step number three comes in, color correction. Now, for color correcting, I'm mostly using two different tools in Final Cut Pro. If we go here and add a new color correction tool, I use the color wheels and the hue saturation curve. So I'm gonna add the color wheels and then I'm gonna add the hue saturation curves. Now, make sure that the order is the right order. So I'm gonna first go and bring it the color wheels up and then the hue saturation on top of the color LUTs because you wanna make sure that you correct it at first and then add the color LUTs. Now, like I said, it's looking a little bit too warm and maybe a little bit too green. So I'm gonna to go to the color wheels and I'm gonna put, instead of 5,000 white balance, I'm gonna put 4,800. Already, that's a little bit less warm and natural looking. And maybe this is looking a little bit too green tinted. So we're gonna go to the opposite side. We're gonna add some magenta. So, you know, maybe two or three. Very minimal adjustments. Even here, you know, that's what it was before. A little bit too warm, a little bit too green. Just fixed it a little bit and already that looks a lot better. Now, once we've done the white balance, I like to impact a little bit with the exposure. So even in this shot, I think it's a little bit bright. I want this to be a little bit more moody. So I'm gonna bring down the shadows a little bit and I'm gonna bring down the highlights a little bit and voila, that's already looking pretty good. So that's the original shot, the log picture profile. Then we have the correction LUT. We have the color grading LUT, then I add the color wheels. And then lastly, what we can do is, if you do notice in the shot that still the skin tones aren't perfectly right, I like to use the dropper tool, drop it on my skin, and then you can you know play around. In this shot, it looks pretty good already, but sometimes, you know, if it's like really red-ish, you can bring it down, or if it's really, you know, green, yellowish, you can bring it up to the orange. So this is a great tool. As well, oftentimes, depending on the shot, I'm using the hue versus saturation. And again, you just click somewhere on the skin and then you can add more saturation or add, take away the saturation. Again, I feel like this shot doesn't really need to use the hue saturation. So that's why I just wanted to show you though how I use it. We can do the same process for the office shot. I usually end up cutting the adjustment layer for different parts. So if my sequence has, you know, this as all the b-roll so i put this one adjustment layer on all over the b-roll but then the studio shots can be way different so we're gonna start from scratch again here so let's delete all the stuff we have here and again we're gonna add the two custom LUTs and we're gonna add first the correction LUT okay this one's a little bit brighter than usual so maybe for this one i will use the Rec 709 dark and just to get a nice little dark look and again I'm going to add my perfect skin tones looking a little bit too yellow and green don't worry just bring down the exposure and again okay this is looking a little bit too warm so I'm going to add a color wheels make sure it's at the top and again I'm going to just take down maybe 200. Now here is where I could use the hue saturation tool better I'm going to add the hue saturation I'm gonna put it up on top of the custom LUTs. And from here, for example, I don't know what it is about me, but for some reason, I don't like blue in my shots. I like more like warm green. So even in this shot, you can see that from the windows, uh, it's a different white balance. It's colder looking than the rest of the lighting in my room. So what I can do sometimes, uh, and even here on the shirt, you notice it's kind of bluish. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll just literally take the eyedropper on, for example, the blue side of my shirt, it's gonna choose that blue, and I'll just bring it down totally. It's a very subtle look, but for some reason, I just don't like that blue shade, and I just pull it out right away. And then here again, we can take the skin tones, maybe this looking a little bit too yellow greenish, and then we're just gonna bring it up a little bit more to the reddish 
side. Very, very like minimal tweaks, but they really make the color grade look good. And all this is really fast. I think in the end, you know, to add the adjustment layer and the custom LUTs, that's like one minute. And then you just go, you know, either section by section, if it's all the same uh, lighting and setup, or I might just do clip by clip for the correction. To give you guys that under the hood experience, I thought I'll do a clip by clip color correction just so you can see how it looks. So I'm gonna take off the hue and saturation from the clips, and then I'm gonna just go clip by clip. So again, look at this clip, and I can see that it's a little bit too warm, maybe a little bit too green, so I'm gonna bring it down, maybe even a little bit more, and then maybe this is a little bit too green tinted, so I'm gonna bring it there. Again, I want this to do a little more moody, so I'm gonna bring down the shadows and bring down the highlights a little bit. But just with the color wheels alone, it went from a little bit too yellow, to a little bit too green, to this look. Next clip, okay, again, I'm just gonna add the color wheels here. I'm gonna bring down the exposure a little bit. I'm gonna bring the highlights a little bit. This one actually might add a little bit of warmth and then I'm gonna add a little bit of magenta to the shot. There we go, before and after, looking pretty good. And then from here, if I look here, and then look here, these look more matched now. And you might have to just go back and forth a little bit just to make sure. And sometimes if you've been really staring at the screen for a long time, just stare at something white for a bit and kind of just like reset your eyes and look back. And sometimes you'll be like, oh my gosh, how did I correct it like, like that? But it just takes time to get used to training your eye to see, is this too warm? Is this too cold? Is this too green? Is this too purple magenta-y? Is there the same contrast levels? And yeah, it just takes practice and time to train your eye. Okay, next clip. Again, I'm gonna add the color wheel. This is looking a little bit more greener. Okay, that's too much magenta. Let's add some warmth. This is a little bit colder. I'm gonna bring down the highlights just a little bit, not too much. Let's see. I, I want a really moody look. This is not maybe as moody as I usually, but here again, a little bit greener magenta look right here. Um, let's try to see, okay, this really close up of my face. It looks cool, my eyes are just like popping blue here. So just checking the highlights down a little bit. Not even that much, just a hundred. Sometimes it's like such fine tuning and this actually might add back some green. And like that, look at that. So yeah guys, this is my color grading process in Final Cut Pro. Just a recap, step one, Adjustment layer, two custom LUTs, add the correction LUT to go from log to rec 709, then add the color grade that you want, bring it down from 100% to 70%, and then add your corrections with the you know color wheels or the hue saturation. And the more you practice, the more you train your eye, you're gonna get faster at this, and you're gonna get better color grading look for your videos. So this is my complete color grading process for Final Cut Pro. It is fast, easy, and I'm able to get nice cinematic look for my footage. Hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. This has been a long time in the works, getting used to Final Cut Pro and learning my own color grading process there. But here it is, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you like, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. It is much appreciated. All right, I'm hungry, it's time for lunch. It's not easy talking to this black box camera for hours upon hours. It takes its toll on my body, so time to charge up. Oh.